Good morning on this St Valentine's Day. What a glorious morning it is. A lovely blue sky. The birds are singing and yet there is still snow on the ground. Hence the scarf, hence the coat, because it is still rather chilly. I'm reminded of those words that Paul tells us in Colossians. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgives you. And over all these things, in other words, the overcoat, put on the overcoat of love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. And so we sing our first hymn. Here is love, vast as the ocean, reminding us how vast is the love of God. Here is love, vast as the ocean, loving kindness as the flood. When the bricks of life are ransomed, shed for us His precious blood. Who is love will not remember, who can see? I've come in from the cold and it's a lot warmer inside. I wonder if you've heard the story about a man and a woman who were boarding a cruise liner. 
they got to their cabins and they realised they'd both been booked into the same cabin, even though they didn't know each other. Well, it was only for one night, so they decided it wouldn't matter, not to bother, they'd be all right. So they settled down for the night. And in the middle of the night, it turned cold. And the man who was on the top bunk called down to the woman who was at the bottom and said, excuse me, I don't mean to bother you, but do you think you could possibly pass me that extra blanket because it's a bit chilly up here? The woman was quiet for a moment and then she said, well, I have a better idea. Why don't, just for tonight, we pretend that we're husband and wife, that we're married? Wow, thought the man. That's a great idea. He was so excited. And so he said to the woman, well, yes, that's a great idea. Why not? The woman then replied, good, get your own blanket. I'm not sure if it's a true story or not, but maybe it rings a little true. So love, what is love all about? Our reading is from Luke, chapter 7, verses 36 to 50. It's the story of the sinful woman anointing the feet of Jesus. And I was just thinking how we can appreciate how she must feel when our prayers have been answered, when our loved ones have been suffering. And uh, we can appreciate how thankful this must, woman must have felt at her deliverance. Reading from verse 36. One of the Pharisees asked Jesus to eat with him, and he went into the Pharisee's house and took his place at the table. And a woman in the city, who was a sinner, having learned that he was eating in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster jar of ointment. She stood behind him at his feet, weeping, and began to bathe his feet with her tears and to dry them with her hair. Then she continued kissing his feet and anointing them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw it, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would have known who and what kind of woman this is who is touching him, that she is a sinner. Jesus spoke up and said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. Teacher, he, repl he replied, speak. A certain creditor had two debtors, one owed 500 denarii and the other 50. When they could not pay, he cancelled the debts for both of them. Now, which of them will love him more? Simon answered, I suppose the one for whom he cancelled the greater debt. And Jesus said to him, You have judged rightly. Then, turning toward the woman, he said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has bathed my feet with her tears and dried them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but from the time I came in, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore, I tell you, her sins, which were many, have been forgiven. Hence, she has shown great love. But the one to whom little is forgiven, loves little. Then he said to her, Your sins are forgiven. But those who were at the table with him began to say among themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? And he said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Thanks be to God for his message to us. Amen. And so we have the story of the woman anointing Jesus' feet. It's quite a familiar passage. There's three main characters, 
Simon the Pharisee, who was a good man, a righteous man, a religious man, who always tried to follow the law and do what was right. But he seemed to, to know it as well. He seemed to think he was a good man. Then we have the woman, Mary, who was a sinner, a prostitute, an outcast, someone who really in society was not welcome at all. And Mary knew it. Mary knew that she'd lived a bad life and was not worthy. And then we have Jesus. Jesus who knew all about Simon, knew his thoughts and knew deep in his heart. He knew Mary. He knew all about Mary's past, but he could see her now and he knew what was in her heart. And as Mary was washing Jesus' feet, she'd wept so much that his feet were drenched. So she was then drying them with her hair and then she anointed them with oil. Simon looked on and he thought to himself, who is this woman who's doing this? Who does she think she is? And Jesus, surely Jesus, a prophet, should know who she is and what kind of a person she is and what kind of life she's lived and why is he letting her do this? Well, it could be that Mary was thinking the same thing. Why is Jesus allowing me to do this? Why isn't he pushing me off? But he isn't. He's accepting me. He's allowing me to, to wash his feet and anoint his feet. Jesus turned to Simon and he said to him, look at this woman. Look at this woman and, and see what a welcome she's given me. What kind of a welcome did you give me, Simon? When I came, you didn't give me any water to wash my feet or bathe my feet. But well, Mary has. Mary is overwhelming me with her love. What about you, Simon? Where's your love? What are you doing for me? And that's why Jesus told the story about the two men who owed debts, a large debt and a smaller debt. And then how both of them were forgiven when they couldn't pay the debt. And that's why he said to Simon, who is it who would love the most? Who would be most grateful? And of course, Simon, well, even Simon knew and said, well, it has to be the, the one who owed the most, of course. The one who owed the most would love the most. Exactly, said Jesus. This woman has sinned a lot and she knows she's sinned a lot. But now in true repentance, she's sorry. And look how much she's loving me. So my question today for us is, how much do we love Jesus? And how much do we show him our love? Jesus loves us, each one of us, unconditionally. Whether we've lived a, a reasonably good life, been to church for many, many years and always tried to do what's right. Or maybe we've not led a good life and in the past we think about it and we're quite ashamed of some of the things we've done. It doesn't matter because God loves us. Jesus loves us. Jesus loves us unconditionally and when we come to him in true repentance he will forgive us Jesus knew what was really in the bottom of Simon's heart and he knew what was in the bottom of Mary's heart and friends he can see our heart he can see how we truly are our attitudes our love that we have for others and for himself. So again, how much do we love Jesus? Have we still got the passionate love that we first had when we first came into a relationship with him? 
or has our love now become lukewarm? Has our love, has our love faded? This next week, it's the beginning of Lent. And as we journey to Easter, we go on Jesus's journey. And we think about all what he did for us. And all what he did for us because he loves us. He went to the cross and died for each one of us because he loves us. He died so that we might be forgiven. He died so that we could be saved and have new life and be set free. That we could have new life here and now and that we can have eternal life when that day comes. Jesus' love for us is overwhelming. How much do we love him in return? I'm reminded of the song written by Noel Richards, Noel Richards. Overwhelmed by love, deeper than oceans, high as the heavens, ever living God. Your love has rescued me. All my sin was laid on your dear son, your precious one. All my debt he paid. Great is your love for me. No one could ever earn your love. Your grace and mercy is free. Lord, these words are true. So is my love for you. Mary loved, truly loved, and was forgiven. How much do we love Jesus? And have we received his forgiveness, which is available for each one of us? Amen. come now to our prayers and there is a response 
please join me as we say together, help us to love with all of our hearts. Loving God, on this St Valentine's Day, we thank you for the gift of love. Firstly, for your love for us, your unconditional love, your overwhelming love, your love that gave us Jesus to be our Saviour and Lord. Help us to love you as you love us. Help us to love with all of our hearts. Secondly, loving God, we thank you for the love of family and friends, for neighbours, colleagues and carers. Thank you for all those who help us and support us, who encourage us and who are there for us. Help us to love others as you love them. Help us to love with all of our hearts. Finally, loving God, help us to love those we find hard to love, those who society rejects, those who feel unworthy. Help us to love the unlovely as you love them. Help us to love with all of our hearts. In the name of Jesus, Amen. How deep the Father's love for us How vast beyond all measure That He should give His only Son To make a wretch His treasure
Yeah. 